Colombia is the world's largest exporter of cocaine, accounting for around 43% of global production. For half a century, a global war on drugs has failed to eradicate illegal production, but the question of what should replace it continues to be debated. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. While Nixon waged his war on drugs, in Colombia, a decades-long conflict between the revolutionary group FARC, part funded by the drugs trade, and the national government divided the country. In the early 2000s, the US-funded Plan Colombia supplied military and foreign aid to the country to try and defeat the FARC and to stem the growth of cocaine. In 2016, then-President Santos finally agreed a peace deal with the FARC. Despite this move towards peace, coca cultivation continues unabated. The LSE and the German Development Agency, GIZ, are part of the Drugs and Development Hub, a network of academics, decision makers and people affected by drugs economies. Its aim is to propose new, more humane ways of tackling these issues. Its first meeting was in Bogota in early 2020. It's a new initiative based on the recognition that the development debate on internationally on drugs and crime is somehow working in silos. So try to bring disparate actors from the crime sector, from the development sector, from the drug sector, from health sector, human rights, whatever it is, and try to get them discussing this topic on a similar plane and a similar language. If we want to have inclusive drug policy, it's activating the networks that are already existing and pulling in our own resources to support these responses. So I think that the hub uh, is really important in order to sort of reframe and rethink the drug issue in general. I think we need to connect the urban and the rural side of the problem and also the supply and the demand. Illicit drugs crops, such as coca, are mostly grown in rural, isolated areas with few connections to legal markets. As part of its first meeting, delegates from LSE and development cooperation specialists travelled to one of those areas. Outside Puerto Aziz, farmers have joined together to form a cooperative that plant acai trees for the farming of their berries. We visited one of their farms and began by asking them about the challenges of moving away from coca production. Pero conozco que eh, la problemática en toda la zona del Putumayo ha sido eh, la siembra y la, el cultivo de la coca, que por, le genera mayores ingresos y porque el gobierno no ha tenido políticas claras en la parte, digamos así, de agricultura, ayuda a los campesinos. Y esa es la parte que motiva a que las personas la mayoría todavía tengan cultivos de coca en sus fincas o heredas. Eh, sí, yo hace 10 años eh, era productor de coca y también eh, era, un, era un pionero en deforestación. A mí me contrataban eh, muchas personas de diferentes fincas para hacer talas de bosques para el establecimiento de cultivos de coca. Eh, en el momento, ya hace cinco años, que dejamos eso atrás, dejamos la coca y también la deforestación. Eh, cuando trabajaba con la coca, eh, me ganaba eh, 30 mil pesos diarios, con una pata en el cementerio y la otra en la cárcel. With the signing of the peace deal in 2016, areas like this have seen decreasing levels of conflict, which has allowed alternative development projects to work with communities. In the moment, thanks to the aprovechamiento of the forest, we have implemented the peace, we have also implemented the conservation of the bosques, of the fuentes hídricas, because ya se ha reducido la the siembra de, de, de cultivos ilícitos y también el proceso. One of the main legal alternatives to coca production is cattle ranching. This livelihood causes deforestation, 
a practice that alternative development programs are seeking to address. Alternative development is about joint uh, building of uh, alternative livelihoods uh, with the communities. To say that it's like a mm, very non-traditional uh, alternative development intervention, uh, mainly because we work it uh, with the environmental sector uh, and not with all the uh, institutions of alternative development in Colombia. Nos gustaría que la gente nos mirara como gestores de paz, de conservación del medio ambiente y de la fauna y que seguimos siendo productivos ante la comunidad y ante el mundo entero. ¿no? Y nosotros siempre estamos tratando de que se conserve las cosas, se conserve los, la, las, los sistemas, eh, se conserve la naturaleza, porque es importante. Y Colombia siempre ha sido estigmatizada porque ha sido de, el, la cuna del paramilitarismo, de la guerrilla y de muchas drogas. Pero nosotros estamos dándole la vuelta y diciendo no, nosotros también, nosotros hacemos cosas diferentes, apoyamos a la naturaleza y queremos que nos vean diferentes. Nosotros queremos que el mundo sepa que acá no, no solamente puedes encontrar eso, sino puedes encontrar cosas maravillosas. A factor that keeps people in illicit drugs trades is land titling. Many people do not officially own the land where they work or live. A lack of official rights means that many communities exist outside of governmental systems that could support them. Former Colombian minister and drugs and development hub delegate Miguel Sampa instituted programs while in office that would provide land titles to people as they moved away from illicit crop cultivation. What we created at the National Land Agency was a program in which if you're in a zone that is uh, near any illicit crop cultivation or if you used to grow uh, illicit crops, then you will be included in the program and you will get your, your title for your land. In a eradication, forced eradication program, 70% of the families or more will go and go and grow coca again. In the program of, of land formalization for substitution, 3% of the families went and grow coca again. The results were amazing. The commitment of the affected communities plays a crucial role for a successful transition. The village of La Florida actively decided to move away from coca cultivation and become part of alternative development programs. In this case, Cocoa plants for chocolate. Sí, pues hace 10 años aquí en la vereda de la Florida. Esto eran eh, cultivos ilícitos de coca. En ese tiempo, pues era, o sea, la contaminación tanto al medio ambiente como a las personas por causa de fumigaciones que se hacían en cultivos de coca. Se sabe que fumigaciones son cada cuatro días tienen que estar con fumigaciones de de químicos muy fuertes, eh, pues ahora des, desde el 2000 que, que se empezó con los cultivos de cacao ya todas las familias aquí en la zona, es un cambio notorio grandísimo tanto para la comunidad, para los jóvenes, para el medio ambiente porque en el cultivo del cacao se disminuyen las disminuciones, además de eso que el cacao aporta para el medio ambiente, entonces Todo eso ha, ha venido en cambio de, de mejorar la calidad de vida de las personas y la calidad del medio ambiente. Pero cómo no puede ser que una fumigación, ustedes se dan cuenta, termina con todo lo, lo natural que tenemos. Entonces yo creo que eh, las fumigaciones aéreas, yo creo que no se debería nunca en la vida pensar en ningún en ningún momento porque nos perjudica a, a todos, a todos. Creo que eh, El Estado creo que está brindando unos apoyos, pero la verdad es que los apoyos que el Estado brinda a veces son como, se incumplen. Entonces muchas personas de pronto por el incumplimiento eh, a veces no pueden apartarse de lo, de lo ilícito, siguen en lo ilícito, por lo menos las partes aledañas que quedan a la distancia de 10, de 12 kilómetros que ellos no pueden, por ejemplo, cambiarse a lo lícito, sembrar plátano, yuca o cacao, porque les dificulta mucho sacar los productos al pueblo. 
Entonces ellos pues siempre mantienen ahí todavía porque no hay ese apoyo. Ha sido una calidad de vida mejor, donde hemos compartido más con la, con la gente, con la comunidad. Hemos sido más sociables con las personas porque antes éramos como más prepotentes, pisábamos duro porque teníamos plata y mucha plata y eso al fin pues quedó, se fue acabando y, y ya ahorita gracias a Dios pues estamos, estamos bien, excelente, se vive en unión con las demás personas y, y la idea es seguir esta cultura para, para así nuestros hijos no tengan que el mañana tener el sufrimiento que nos When we hear about how oh, people growing coke out in Colombia, it, it naturally conjures this sense of criminality and, and this, you know, the, the FARC and all of these negative elements attached to it. Um, and what we see is people who are trying to make economic decisions uh, and community decisions about what their livelihoods will be. And drug policy can either be a positive influence in that and can, can drive in a direction of sustainable development that, that leads to decisions around preserving their local forest and, and, and developing other sources of income which support their family, or it can be this traditional re repressive response. And I think that's what we're trying to do here, is to focus on this positive story of drugs as a development issue, convincing people and enabling people uh, to move beyond a reliance on illicit economies. The instinct to cast coca growers as unethical or malicious, oversimplifies the complex social, political and economic drivers of the drugs trade. The Drugs and Development Hub was formed to understand how these factors interact. These coca crops are going to some markets and as long as there is demand, it's going to be a supply. Uh, so we have to think about this as a holistic way, but I have to admit that uh, I don't see a, a an easy solution in the near future. In Bogotá, the Santa Fe district is a vestige of a failed, hardline approach to drugs policy. Here, the police permit the sale and consumption of drugs, as well as other illegal activities, such as prostitution, but without trying to reduce the harms these cause. The approach is far removed from a progressive policy, which would, for example, provide safe injection facilities for consumers with the support of healthcare professionals. Instead, poverty, criminality and corruption combine to make this area one of the most dangerous in the city. Despite this, some programs operate in the area to help community members. The Bogotá Mejá Todo supports women and children in Santa Fe, providing everything from health checkups and child support to advice and skills workshops. Ingrid Carrera and her team showed us around the area. For example, yesterday in this door uh, was a problem with, uh, between two people that uh, fight for, uh, for drugs. And they, it's very violent, they have uh, uh, knives. knives. Bazuco, the word, comes come from the Spanish word basuro. basura. Which it means like rubbish. So the drug kind of is like yeah. compared to rubbish because it's just like when you make cocaine, it's like what's left in the pan is what they make it of. Mm, police is part of the problem. <laughs> police in this place um, have a business with the people who spend the drugs and they have a money for that. And also, uh, police is very violent. Yeah, and police have to pass every time, but nothing is passed, you know? Police, police is like nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Espera. Disculpame, es que ellos, ellos no hablan español. ¿Cómo estás? Mucho gusto. Mi nombre es Anyorta. Although the police are unsupportive, the team continue to work closely with locals. It is in her work with children that Ingrid sees how the cycle of drugs perpetuates itself. Also, people, uh, the kids say to us, like, I want to be a drug dealer, you know? And I think, no, you, you, you can't, you have to study, you have to have another plan for you. In this neighborhood, uh, como que sucede? Happens. Happens, Happens that uh, drug dealers defend the kids, you know? And kids say, like, oh, did he defend me? I, I want to be, be uh, him. Another example of a more progressive approach in Santa Fe is the renowned fashion designer Diamantina. She moved to the area several years ago 
to start employing drug users to create and model clothing. How did you come up with the idea? Uh, because uh, I, um, I have a brother. He was killed for the, the police uh, in this time, 12 years ago, because he was a drug addict, uh, homeless. Um, and I start to redirection my career. In these fashion shows, the, the guys um, are the, the, the mannequin, the models, um, and it's very successful because it's different, it's real. Yeah, it's here they live. Yeah, uh, and now it's um, the moment when my career um, have importance in Bogota and in the world because my talent before um, now is more important because have people uh, to do part of this. Away from Santa Fe, there are further signs that a more humane drugs policy is taking root. Echelle Cabeze is a government-sanctioned organisation that offers drugs testing and recovery areas in clubs and festivals. The aim is to ensure people know what they're taking is safe. So we visited the, um, the only legal uh, drug testing service in South America. It is for recreational drug use. They open on a Thursday um, and a Friday afternoon to test drugs for people. Uh, I assume as they go into, into the weekend for, the, for, their, for their recreational drug use. Um, and what we were being told was that, that, that people really value that service and feel much safer as a consequence. And also that, uh, that people would get harm reduction interventions when they're with the people testing the drugs and advice is given. In Bogota and Colombia, there are tentative signs that a more compassionate approach is emerging. The Drugs and Development Hub is essential to both advocating for a more person-centered drugs policy and programs, as well as to identifying the significant challenges nations like Colombia face. Maybe we need to take the discussion a little bit away from talking too much about plants and more about the communities and the people who live in the regions, affected by drug war, affected by uh, guerrilla warfare, conflict, uh, and suffering so much. And in fact, in regions where very little development has taken place over a very long time. Our role is to build these bridges, to find the good actors everywhere, right? It's not easy, it takes time, but we've been successful in some interventions and that really gives us hope on, on this, this project. If we can imagine that we'll solve the production side here in Colombia, as long as there is a demand, the production is going to shift somewhere in the world. So we need to solve those tensions. And, and, I, and I think the hub uh, put together a bunch of people that can start thinking on those ideas.